The following is a production of New Mexico State University. Welcome to The Vega Show, veg vegetables in great abundance. My name is Carrie Bachman and I work at New Mexico State University as a nutrition educator. This series is featuring farmers markets in New Mexico and all of the wonderful vegetables that we can buy there. Now today we're actually going to be looking at some of the items that are available in your winter market. And you might be watching this show and it might not exactly be winter anymore. But don't worry, you can use different ingredients and make a very similar dish and I'll explain how you can do that as we go along. If you've never been to a farmer's market, I really encourage you to go. Take the kids as well. It's just such a lot of fun to actually go and meet the growers of the food that we sometimes take for granted. We often shop at the grocery store and we don't really notice that food comes from a piece, a piece of ground and a specific person who's grown it. And that connection is something that we can rebuild when we visit the farmer's market. Also, the food that we get there hasn't traveled for miles and miles, so it's going to be a lot fresher. And sometimes it's even going to be healthier because it's, got, it's maintained its nutrient levels better. Now one of the things with vegetables, a lot of times children don't like to eat them and this show is going to give you lots of tips and ideas on how to actually encourage your kids to enjoy vegetables and to like to enjoy preparing them as well. Vegetables are something that is for the entire family, young and old alike. Now we're going to focus, as I said today, on some winter vegetables and what we'll do is we'll go to one of the farmers markets here in the Albuquerque area and we're going to visit with some of the growers at that market and then come back to the studio here and prepare those foods into a healthy sautéed kale recipe. Now, in New Mexico, we've got a lot of farmer's markets. So if you don't live here in Albuquerque, don't worry, you can find a farmer's market in your local area. And we'll show a number at the end of the show if you'd like to figure out how to contact those people. I hope you enjoy the show today. Let's get started and visit the market. Carrie, welcome to the market. Oh, well, thank you, Sue. The Los Ranchos market started just about 14 years ago okay. and has grown steadily. And we are very fortunate to have a wonderful group of local growers who come from actually as far south as Los Salinas and Cedarcrest and Placitas to sell here. Wow. So we have a good, wonderful group of people. Our season starts May 7th, mm -hmm. runs every week through the end of October, and we're here from 7 to 11 in the morning. Okay, and it's always on Saturday. It's always on Saturday. Nice. We try to have lots of special events to appeal to all ages of people, and we have face painting for kids and free recipe sheets so that you can get a coloring sheet with recipes on it for kids to help with snacks, and we have a variety of different types of food, so you can do your whole menu shopping here. I'm visiting here with Dan, who's a friend of mine and also a farmer. He also happens to just be um, the director, president, I'm trying to remember the name. <laughs> director, president, I guess, president of the board of directors. Of the New Mexico Food and Ag Policy Council, uh, which is a great group that combines a lot of people, nutrition people like myself, farmers like Dan, folks in industry, people in education, and really looking at food and agriculture as a, in the big kind of systems picture. And as I said, Dan is, is a grower here, and I've had my eye on your kale for a while this morning. <laughs> I'm glad you still have some left. I have some left. Well, tell me, um, Dan, you said that this overwintered. So yes. how is the flavor going to be as a result of, of being in the cold weather? Well, the great thing about um, either root crops or greens that make it through the winter, through the season, are really sweet this time. Uh, oxalic acid like in spinach right. is the heat. Okay. So we haven't had any heat to speak of. So we've had um, warm weather now and they're really starting to produce again and they're very sweet. They don't wow. have that oxalic acid. They don't have that uh, tartness, if you will, uh -huh. bitterness. That, you know, what they will get as the season progresses. 
And that's something that's sort of an acquired taste, I think. Um, people who didn't grow up, uh, like as I did in the South, where we ate kale and other kinds of greens, yeah. they're not used to that. So it's a perfect time of year to try try this new crop, try a, try a new food, and it's sweet and you'll develop a taste for it. Well, uh, we were just talking about what I used to do educational with kids in schools. Mm -hmm. We'd go cook and I'd always take chard and kale because the kids so an immediate reaction of, oh, what is that? And then it's like, oh, they either know it and they go, oh, I don't eat that. And so we cook it, we cut it up, uh -huh. we saute it together, and then they eat it. Oh, wow. And they go, wow. And then the parents come in and the, and the kid goes, we just ate some chard. And the mom's mouth drops right. down. And the dads are going, you ate chard? <laughs> they look at me and go, how did you get them to do that? <laughs> well, it's really an issue of uh, simplicity of preparation. Yeah. Which is, you know, either throw it in a steamer. Mm -hmm. um, I actually prefer sauteing it in olive oil, either yes. with onion or garlic, uh, because it, you can cook it as much as you want. But the flavors still come out so much more when you saute it. Right. No, they it's really so do. So simple, you know. Even people on a limited time cooking, spending time in the kitchen, can cook greens. Uh, and I tell people, once you've got it in the pan, if you shut the heat off and put a lid on it. Then you can adjust how long it cooks and eat it. Some people like it real crisp, right. firm like this, and other people like it wilted down and cooked. Exactly. Once you've got the lid on, you can stop it at any point. Exactly. And that's, you know, how to eat kale, greens of any kind, whether right. it's collards. You know, you can't even buy and sell collards here. I mean, so few people understand what collards really? are. Really? And that's a shame. I mean, collards are something that actually are less bitter tasting than kale. Yes. And so they're a little bit easier to get a taste for. Yes. Um, I kind of like the two mixed together. Oh. Actually, it makes a real nice combination. It's, it's kind of like with the carrots, anything in the ground, too, this time of year. Mm -hmm. um, the sweetness. There's none of that um, shipped in from far away taste. Right. Because they're fresh. They did just come out of the ground yesterday. Wow. Um, they're rich, they're full-bodied. Uh, you know, I just can't say enough good things about green, greens and uh, early spring vegetables yes. that come out of the ground. It's, it's so amazing. Well, you know, it's funny. I think a lot of people this time of year think, well, what vegetables are there even to eat? Right. And actually, it's one of my favorite times of year. I'm a little sad when the summer comes because we don't get to enjoy these yeah. winter greens. You have to wait again until fall. That was really fun getting a chance to visit with my friend Dan and his wife Vicki and getting a chance also to look at the kale that they grow. Now I actually went there to their house um, last night and picked up some kale so it would be nice and fresh for the show today. Let me show you what it looks like coming out of the ground. This is some kale that was planted a year ago and you can see it really looks almost like a tree. You can tell that on the bottom, this is where Dan and Vicki have been harvesting the leaves. And then the, as they harvest, it continues to grow up on the top. You can see that it's almost about time to harvest this plant entirely because this is what's called bolting. The plant has actually started forming these flowers here. And if you look at them closely, they look a lot like broccoli. Well, that gives you a clue. Kale is in the same family as broccoli and cauliflower. And it's also, like broccoli and cauliflower, very, very healthy. So it's something that we really want to encourage our children to learn to like at a young age. And there's no better time to do it than when it's winter and these crops actually taste really sweet. So we've got two kinds of kale here today. This one that I'm holding that looks like the tree, this is called dwarf blue. It doesn't look very small right now, but that, again, is because it's a year old, believe it or not. This one right here, which is a little bit different color and a little more frilly leaves, is called Russian red. And they have actually different flavors. So you'll get a chance when you're cooking with these foods, remember the greens, even though we call these cooking greens, you can also eat them fresh, especially when they're real small and tender, they can go straight into salads. Mmm, that is amazingly sweet. That could go into a salad, even right there. Now, how you might wonder, how are we going to wash this crazy vegetable? Well, what you can do is really start with something that's a little bit smaller and hand, more easy to handle. And I've already washed this one, but I'll demonstrate to you exactly how it works. You want to use a little bit more water than this, but actually immerse it all the way in the water and kind of swish up and down like this. Once you've gotten it clean, it's really very easy to prepare. You can just take a knife and kind of t chop off the stems where they meet, or chop off the leaves where they meet the main stem. 
The idea here is you want to keep mo as much of this main stem as you can because that's a really nice part of the plant to use. Some people don't use that part, they only use the leaves, but I really actually like to use the stems as well. And then I'll demonstrate here, chopping kale is really pretty simple. Of course you want to chop correctly, make sure that you're not chopping fingers into your kale. But you can see, just bite-sized pieces is fine. Some people even like to leave it a little bit larger. Kale is a vegetable that's been eaten for many, many years. The Romans and people in medieval times really enjoyed it, and I think you'll find that your family enjoys it too. Let's go ahead and put this in with the rest of the kale I've already chopped. Well, we're here at the Los Ranchos Growers Market, and I'm speaking with Mary, who's got, as you can see, a real assortment of wonderful things. We've got flowers here, some plants that you can just buy. I think they were, what, a dollar each? That's an incredible bargain. Um, some dried catnip and rosemary. Looks like some arugula. And over here, some pecans. No, those, those are, are walnuts. Walnuts, We wow. have a very big walnut tree. That's incredible. Yes, and we go and pick them out of the garden all winter long. Now, and you don't see walnuts that often in New Mexico. You kind of yeah. more think of pecans or pistachios. There's quite a few in the valley. Is this a black walnut or no, an English walnut? English, English okay. Walnut. And the, right. the outsides are not that hard to crack. Wow. You know, we may need to actually get some of these um, for our salad or maybe for even our, our kale dish that we're going to make here. I was so excited to actually see walnuts at one of our farmers markets in New Mexico. You know, I come from the southern part of the state and pecans is really the more common nut that we see there. But to actually have homegrown walnuts that we can use in our dish today, it's really a lot of fun. Um, some of you may know how to use this, it's a nutcracker and this is another way to get your kids involved in the food preparation. These are a little bit hard to crack and it takes a little bit of practice. But you can see that, whoo, once you crack it open, the shell sometimes goes flying. It's a nice activity to do outside for that reason. Let me open, crack it open just a little bit more here. Okay, and you can see, once you open the, a nut, pecans are similar, you're gonna have this inner shell, and then inside, you've got this nice, what they call the nut meat, or the edible part of the nut. So that's the part that you're gonna to wanna to keep. You can't really eat this other part of it here. It's, it's just too, too chewy and too hard for humans to digest. But th what you can do is once you've got it cracked, use the nut pick and just gently try to get the nut pieces out. It's a real art to doing this. I don't have it down by any means, but you can see why having whole nuts in a, in a pie is, is, is really something that used to be very prized as, as a skill. Now a lot of you may be saying, well why are we eating nuts? You know, nuts aren't really that healthy for us. Actually, nuts are quite healthy. They're high in calories, as you probably know, but they're high in healthy fat for us. Um, the other thing that they also have is a lot of protein. And so what you can see here, I'm not gonna get the rest of this nut out, but you can see how long it takes to actually get a nut out of the shell. And if we ate nuts like this in this form all the time, we wouldn't be overeating them. And that's why it's always nice to have a bowl of local nuts on your table, on the coffee room table. The kids can actually, when they're hungry, take the nutcracker, have a few nuts, and they'll actually enjoy a healthy snack without overdoing it. Now, you may wonder what is this gonna have to do with the kale that we're working with? Well, it's one of the ways that we can make kale into a dish that children will like. They actually really like nuts a lot, and so it's a way to add something tasty to a dish that might not be so familiar. And if at first they don't like it, well, keep trying. Don't take it personally. It takes a while to like new foods. Let's go visit Mary now for the third ingredient in our dish. If you're familiar with ginger, it looks a little bit like that, but it's not. Can you tell us, Mary, what this is? Well, this is Jerusalem artichoke, and it grows in the ground in the winter and the spring, and you can pull it up and uh, eat it that way. In the summertime, it sprouts and grows about eight feet tall and has beautiful yellow little sunflowers on the end of it. And you're so right, they're actually related to, they're in the sunflower family. They are. Right? They sure are. And I got these from a woman 
I was trying to feed six children and her husband would go down to the river and, and get frog legs and they would eat Jerusalem artichokes. No kidding. <laughs> she had a lot of kids and not that much money and that's where I first got started. Well, you know, it's interesting that a lot of foods we think of as, as you know, maybe survival foods have kind of come back in this day and age to be sort of a gourmet food. How would you go about preparing this? It's, I well, think for people who don't know, they might wonder. Well, I, I like to just take it and you don't even have to do any more than just wash it. And it's very much like jicama, but it's not as sweet. Mm -hmm. And you can just cut this up in small pieces and put it in your salad or whatever you like to eat, eat it with. And it's, and it's kind of like a crunchiness to the right. salad. And uh, it's, it's well known, especially back east. Because uh, I have a cookbook from the Victory Garden that a lot of people like to watch on PBS, and it's um, uh, there's a whole chapter that's devoted to Jerusalem artichokes. Oh wow! And some people cook them just like potatoes. Some people shred them and make um, pancakes with them. Um, I've cut them up in small pieces and put them in vegetable dishes. There's just you know, Wow, and these are just so wonderful. I mean, the skin on this is just uh -huh. very tender. Do you right. you can even eat the skin? I'm oh, imagining. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. I never peel them. Great. Yeah, just just like need to wash them a right. little bit carefully. Yeah. Well, these are wonderful. You know, this is going to taste really good. I think in our kale dish, it'll provide a little bit of crunch and also a little bit of sweetness. Mm -hmm. um, so this is wonderful. Kind of like water chestnuts. Are. Right, right. But something that's actually you could grow in your own yard. Right. The one thing I do know is that these tend to spread. <laughs> and so once you get them, you're, you're right. probably going to have them for a while. I have them in an area where it doesn't matter. In fact, I have blackberries. Uh huh. And I, I sell the blackberries at the grocery market. That was That's my main crop. Oh, okay. And these things kind of grow in among <laughs> the blackberries. So when the blackberries are done, here comes the artichokes. Wow. All over the place. And they don't seem to mind the eating. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. And that's really wonderful. Well, thank you so much, Mary. I think I'm going to go ahead and buy you out okay. of the Jerusalem right. artichokes. Well, these are the same Jerusalem artichokes that I bought from Mary last weekend. And you can see they've kept really nicely just in a plastic bag in my refrigerator. They've already been rinsed off a little bit, but we want to make sure to get all of that grit and, and dirt off because these grow under the ground just like potatoes do. So you want to just kind of put them in water like this. You can use the same water you used for the kale and get them washed off nicely. Now, as we were mentioning, the skin is really nice and thin with these, so you don't have to peel them. Peeling them is not a lot of fun. You can see they look a lot like potatoes on the inside. You can cook them just as you would potatoes, but they'll cook faster, so make sure they don't cook them too long or they'll get mushy. Now, I'm just going to cut them into slices here. Texture-wise, when they're raw, they are like jicama, or water chestnuts. Very nice, crunchy, delicate flavor. When they're cooked, you can actually get them to be a little bit softer and you can even mash them. But they're just so beautiful. Once we've cut them, we're gonna put them into here, which is water, to which I've added just a little bit of vinegar. That keeps them from turning brown. And then we'll put them back here on the side. Now, Jerusalem artichokes are a really interesting vegetable. They actually originated in North America, so they're native to this, con this continent. Now, the Native Americans grew them and they introduced them to people from Europe who came over. And the Europeans took them back. For a while, they were pretty popular. And then they started, um, this was before they really enjoyed potatoes. Once potatoes became popular in Europe, Jerusalem artichokes lost a bit of favor. And in fact, people said that they thought they would give them leprosy because of these funny bulbs that they have on them. In fact, they're very healthy. They've got a lot of iron and they're a really nice vegetable that you can grow in your own garden. You can plant just a little bit like this, about three or four inches down, and it will grow into this beautiful plant that looks like a sunflower. It has a gorgeous flower on the top. And then when you're hungry, when you're looking for Jerusalem artichokes, you just go into the yard and you can pick them. Now, the interesting thing about these is they're actually used in, um, when, during wartime in Europe. They were one of the few foods that you could access without needing a ration card. So they really served a very important purpose. And here too in New Mexico, we can grow these very easily, something the kids would really like to grow, harvest, and then you can even eat them raw. They are so tasty, you could serve them with a dip. So many things we can do with them. But today, we're gonna to put them into our kale saute. So let's go ahead and we'll get started cooking our dish up here. 
All right, we've got everything here that we need for our sauteed kale. We've got our kale, two different kinds that we cut up earlier. We've got Jerusalem artichokes that we just looked at a second ago. And then, of course, don't forget the walnuts, which are going to add a nice little bit of flavor and protein at the very end. Now what we're going to do, I've got this electric skillet here. You can do this in a frying pan or a pot at home. You want to make sure you do it in something that has a nice tight-fitting lid. I'm going to add just a bit of olive oil. Again, olive oil is healthy for us, and so it's a nice oil to use in this kind of a recipe. Often, you can also add garlic or saute some onions with this recipe. I'm just going to keep it simple today. All we're going to be using is the kale and the Jerusalem artichokes in here together. Now, as I mentioned, these are going to taste different and cook up differently depending on how long you cook them. I'm going to go ahead and put them in right now, and they'll be a bit softer. Turn this up a little bit. There we go. Mmm, can smell that already. Put in our Jerusalem artichokes and stir them around a little bit. Any bit of water that they have on them is fine. They don't have to be entirely dry. You see what they'll do? They'll start looking a bit like potatoes as they cook. You just want to kind of get them coated, coated with oil here. And then what we're going to do is going to put in a whole bunch of greens right on top of those. This may seem like a lot, but what happens with these is they'll cook down. As they heat up, they're going to get reduced in size. So we can pretty much fill up the whole pan, and now we're just going to put the lid on. As I said, make sure it's tightly fitting so that it steams nicely. I'm going to turn the heat down a little bit. I mentioned earlier that you might not always find kale at your farmer's market, and there's some other things that you can use other than kale. Here's an idea. These are called chard. They're really, it's a delicious plant that's related to spinach, and that's something that would take a little less time to cook. There are other kinds of plants in the same family, though, as kale. Beets are one of them, and we normally are used to eating the beet, the root, but here, actually, you can use the beet greens as well, and they're very tasty cooked up. Turnip greens are also delicious, collard greens, all of these things. And you'll find if you start getting your kids used to them, they will develop a taste for them, and so will you. Let's go ahead and see how this is doing here. You can see on the bottom that it's starting to wilt a little bit. Oh, that smells so good. And you can really, of course, if your hands are clean, you can really just toss it like this with your hands. It's not going to get too awfully hot, especially here at the beginning. Just want to toss it a little bit, and then we'll let that cook. When we come back, we'll see how it ends up. We'll put the, uh, the walnuts on at the very end. Now remember, you can add other tastes to this as well, garlic and onion. It's delicious no matter what you do. Well, I'm here at the Los Ranchos Growers Market, and I have found an old friend, Jerry Aragon, who actually works with me in the Cooperative Extension Service. Jerry is one of our ICANN nutrition educators. And you also have your own business yes. in your free time. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me what you've got here today and how, how did this get started? And Tell me well, a little bit. Well, here with the market, um, I've been here, this will be my 13th year going into the summer when we start uh -huh. back in May. And um, I just started off, they asked me to come out and do a smoothie uh, juice bar. And back then I didn't really know a whole lot about that, but I brought some strawberries and bananas and people would pass and I'd blend up and I'd sell maybe one here and there. And so I got this bright idea of breakfast burritos. Oh. I was raised, my grandmother had cafes all over New Mexico, and so I've been familiar with food and then the I can with the food safety. So anyway, I brought six burritos, blinked my eyes, they were gone. Oh and my here goodness. I am 13 years later and I can't wow. have enough baked goods and um, the sole and the different flavors. I have a lot of loyal customers that really look forward to coming here to have a, a, a healthy breakfast. Well, you know, it's nice too because a lot of times um, we'll find sweets but nothing else. And Jerry has a real variety here. And one thing that we like to say in our ICANN classes, you know, a sweet roll every once in a while is fine. Yes. You don't need to cut those out of your diet entirely. But tell us a little bit about what you've got here, because this is what I've got my <laughs> eye on. <laughs> I've got the traditional pozole. Oh, I've that got looks the wonderful. diced pork, the white corn with some red chili and a little onion, some spices. 
Um, it is the real, real traditional pozole that we have here in New Mexico. It's usually our Christmas soup, yes. but here at the market, Christmas is every Saturday morning. <laughs> and this <laughs> time of year when it's cold, yes. it's really a treat. At six in the morning when I'm here, I uh, have people come and they pick up their ports to take home. Uh -huh. And of course they grab their bowl of pozole and their burrito and, and they eat here. I have an extra table and Do they sit and have an outside cafe. That's <laughs> Well, it's neat to see how you can actually educate people who are coming to the market about healthy, fresh foods like this one, which is also a traditional food that we enjoy in New Mexico. A lot of people aren't making this at home anymore, but you can come to the market and Jerry's got it right here fresh. Well, I think I will go ahead and have a cup of that. That would be wonderful, Jerry. Thank you so much. And while you're getting that, let me just explain a little bit about what our program does. Um, I mentioned that Jerry and I both work with the ICANN program, which stands for Ideas for Cooking and nutrition and this is a nutrition education program where you can actually come together with a group of people you get together learn about healthy foods but then the best part is you actually get to prepare them yourselves and try them well so if I for example don't know how to make pozole but I really enjoy it I could come to one of your classes and learn yes wow oh well, that would be wonderful <laughs> and we know you're a wonderful cook Jerry so that's something that's a real resource in our community here we also we teach a lot of um, stir fries and a lot of the vegetables and fruits in our classes so I taught a lot of people in the community and more are welcome. Well that's great you know as you see vegetables on our show that you'd like to learn more about certainly this I can program is a very good resource so please do give us a call. Thanks so much. Thank wow that just looks spectacular. Let me go ahead and dish up some onto my plate here. You can cook this a little bit longer or a little bit shorter if you'd like. It's one of those things, kale is very forgiving and it's still gonna be full of nutrition even if you cook it a little bit longer than that. Now let's not forget our local walnuts. Just sprinkle a few on top. You could toast them even for a little bit more flavor. Let's see how this came out. Oh wow. Now that is tasty. If your kids like a little sweetness, you can put some raisins in as well, and that's really tasty. Mmm. Let's see how that Jerusalem artichoke came out. Looks like it's still pretty crunchy. It's a nice crunch. A little bit like water chestnut. Mmm. I hope you'll give this recipe a try at home. You know, and even if you can't find exactly the same foods at the farmer's market, you're, sure, you're still bound to find delicious things that you're going to want to try with your kids. Remember, it can take up to eight times trying a new food before you actually learn to like it. So don't give up after the first time. You might try your kale sautéed like this. You could even eat it raw with some salad dressing. Try it different ways and your family will actually over time develop a taste for it and I think you'll really find that it's a, a part of your diet that you enjoy. Green leafy vegetables are so full of nutrients, and the farmer's market is a wonderful place to find them. Now, Jerry mentioned that we have nutrition classes, and I'd like to remember, remind you to give us a call at the number you see on your screen if you'd like to learn more about the nutrition classes, find out where a farmer's market is in your area, or find out some more about healthy foods in general. Just give us a call, and I hope you'll tune in for the next show of Vega, Vegetables in Great Abundance. We'll see you then. The proceeding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.